Okay, let's go on over here now. President Reagan, I present to you the uh, 14 White House Fellows of the year 82-83 in the semicircle. Behind them, their spouses and parents from all over the country to enjoy this wonderful occasion. Well, Admiral, I'm delighted to be here. I think, as you may know, uh, 18 years ago, President Johnson launched the White House Fellowships Program, calling it a program for a select number of young people who have demonstrated high moral character, exceptional ability, marked leadership qualities, and unusual promise of future development. Now, much has changed in the intervening years, but the White House Fellowships Program has stood the test of time, and the same standards prevail. I'm the fifth president to preside over this program. And like my predecessors, I value it highly as a vehicle for developing new leadership for the nation, as a source of fresh talent for the executive branch, and as a symbol of the kind of achievement we want to encourage and reward. I've been familiar with the White House Fellowships Program for many years. I met with several classes of fellows when I was a governor, and you are my third class as a president. In addition, some 20 former fellows have returned to work in our administration here, many of them in senior positions. An additional six are working with the private sector survey group that's devising ways to reduce waste and inefficiency in the federal government, and another 30 are serving as officers with our armed forces. So as you can see, I'm already getting a return for my investment in the White House fellows, and so is the country thing doesn't go away. <laughs> I want to pause for a moment to salute your chairman, though, Admiral Jim Stockdale, a genuine hero, a man of courage, steadfastness, patriotism, and compassion. And because you're so young, maybe I can invoke some memories. I well remember the day almost 10 years ago when he and his fellow prisoners of war landed on the Philippines and walked down the ramp from the plane. Many of them had endured terrible years of confinement, torture, and deprivation. And as the senior POW, Jim had suffered worse than most. But as they came down that ramp, each one of them saluted smartly, said they were proud to have had the honor to serve their country, and thanked us for bringing them home. When I saw them, I asked myself, where do we get such men? Where do we find them? And the question was answered almost as soon as it was asked. From the cities and the towns and the farms and the factories and shops, and offices all over this great land, from where we've always gotten them when we needed them. You also come from a multitude of regions and professions, and you bring talent, creativity, and enthusiasm that we badly need in the federal government. As you begin your Fellowship year, I commend to you Jim Stockdale's example of character and service because it exemplifies the qualities we expect in White House fellows. Much is asked of those to whom much is given, and a great opportunity is being given to you through this program, and I hope you'll respond by resolving to devote part of your time this year and beyond to helping those less fortunate than yourselves. One logical place where the fellows can play an effective role is with our Private Sector Initiatives Task Force, headed by Bill Verity. He's just had a group of business leaders over in the White House that I just left talking about this. With your significant volunteer experience, you're well qualified to identify ways in which the government can foster workable, voluntary activities in the private sector. To that end, I'm requesting all cabinet departments and agencies that have White House fellows to use them where possible in their own private sector task force areas. I've also asked them to ensure that you're given duties and assignments that will challenge your talents to the fullest. The motto of the fellowship program is with widest horizons. I hope your horizons are indeed widened this year and that your experience working at a higher level in the federal government gives you both a healthy skepticism about the limits of government 
and a new appreciation of the good that can result from sound government programs and policies. I hope your experience gives you a new respect for that marvelous system we call democracy. It's frustrating sometimes, chaotic system, but with all its defects, it's still just the best form of government ever devised by man. And as you proceed with your fellowship year and then return to your local communities, I hope you'll continue to strengthen your sense of commitment to your community, to making your local government work, to helping those less fortunate than yourself, to preserving the great legacy of our beloved country. And I'm proud to have you as part of my administration. And as you embark on your fellowship year, I know that Nancy, who every once in a while watches these from up there on the third floor when we're down here, joins me in wishing you good luck and Godspeed. Welcome, and I'm going to step over to the side now and... Jim. Scott Gracian. Paul Hesse. Frank Klotz. Thanks so much, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Douglas Kamek. Nice to meet you, Mr. President. This one's for the giver. <laughs> Thank you very much. Happy Mendoza. Notre Dame. Notre Dame. <laughs> Daniel Oliver. Sharon Ritchie. Thank you. William Roper. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Adis Vila. Diane Vine. 